My name is Brenda Jador. I am the music director here at Savannahway Gigan Mogul. I teach music from grades 2 to 12. I do four courses in the senior high the, at the province level. The other courses in music I teach from 2 to 9 are pro provincial based plus I have created Aboriginal curriculum from various First Nations and Inuit and Métis people, uh, composers, performing artists, visual artists, so I accumulate that into uh, each grade in a different unit. But with the senior high, I, have to, I stick basically to the provincial guidelines. When I came in 1980, there was no pavement. There was nothing, just houses, very happy people, very humble people. And I was asked, because I have music background, would I teach music? So I, coming from St. John's, I said, oh my gosh, I'd be delighted. Mm. So I got in my little Honda Civic and I drove to Con River and I didn't realize that the gas sign at the end of the road says, check your fuel. So I barely made it here because there's, there's no a service station anywhere. So I came up on and then I saw the dirt road and went, oh my goodness, I could have had a job in St. John's. I could have had a job anywhere. I said, oh, I wonder where this road is going to lead me. So I thought about Robert Frost, two roads diverged in the yellow wood. And I was thinking, this is autumn. There's, I had two choices. So I said, no, I could do this. And it was the best decision of my entire life. When I arrived in the classroom, uh, probably three or four days later, I walked in and I was like, okay, this school is different. Why is this school lacking? Because I didn't see the resources. I saw no, absolutely no sign of art resources, visual art resources. And then, of course, I was music-based. So I went to the, at that time, was a principal, because we were under provincial regulation mm. at that time. So I went and I said, Mrs. Wetzel, what are we going to do with the music program? I have no piano. I don't have a keyboard. I don't have a little drum. I don't have a triangle. Not even thinking about band instruments or choral risers or anything. So she said, that's why you were chosen, because you're going to invent these things. You are going to create a music program. And I said, wow. So anyway, about five days later, I was going to church here, and there was a, a, a historic individual that sat outside the church. He was an elder, a village elder, fluent in Mi'kmaq. And as I was going in, he nodded his head at me. And to me, that was a sign that I was meant to be here. So anyway, I just went on into church and there was no music. And so I said, okay, the first thing I'll do is start a church choir with the children. So something inspired me about that man because when I, when I got the children together, they had no experience, no background, no pitch, nothing. So anyway, I, I taught them what I could without the piano. And my God, it was like every one of them were born with this perfect pitch and it would give me goosebumps and but they would go are we good are we good miss brenda i couldn't get over it so i remember the hymn was uh what is it in english come by here lord but in Mi'kmaq, i wanted to, that was my very first hymn i wanted to translate it right away before we sang it in the church so it was jugawe niskum and where did i get that from that elder outside the church step because i asked him like can i speak to you and he said sure and I said, I want to put the language in the church. Ah, ah, yeah. I said, all I need to know is the translation, because you know how that song is so repetitive. Someone's hungry, someone's thirsty. And he said, ah, no problem. Do you go in this gum? Gawizing, gawizing. I said, gawizing. Good, good, good. <laughs> and you know when somebody tells you that you're doing something good, you get that feeling? I got a spark. And that was the beginning of it all. So then the, I left Con River because I had a really very lucrative job offer in the south coast of Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. And I taught at a beautiful primary school. All, all um, 350 students did music. Most of them had training in piano at that age. So it was like, wow. So I stayed there for five years and I got married in between the five and my husband was a police officer still on the reserve. So after the fifth year, Con River was recognized as a First Nations reserve with full land and all the acts in the Indian Act would be abide to by the provincial and federal government. So I got a call. Guess who calls me? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Edwina Wetzel, the principal. Now she's moved to director. 
because she doesn't work within the school board anymore. They are in charge of their own education. So I said, yes, she said, I need a, I need a favor. We need you back. And I said, oh, gosh, I've got like 35 piano students. I have four choirs. I had like absolutely wonderful success, like at the different competitions and stuff. And the parents, oh, my God, they were so, so resourceful. So she said, but you started the language here in music. And five years we've gone without it. So I said, I'm coming back. So I told my husband, he was um, he was so, so, so happy. And I had uh, two little girls at that point. I, they were very young, three and about two months old. And I came back and not much had changed. But the self-esteem of everybody here changed for the better. Because they somebody was finally recognizing that these were Aboriginal people who had their own history, who had their treaties, who had a right to education, health, but on their terms. So I was honored. I said, wow, so the music education is going to be left up to me, so I wanted Paramount. So then started the drum group. I wanted a, a caribou skin drum because I had traveled to uh, Sister Nations, uh, Eskasoni in mm -hmm. Nova Scotia, mm -hmm. and I saw the floor drum. So I went to the chief and we sat down and we chatted and I said, I want you to build it with the children. Not a problem, we'll do it on the garden. So we went to the chief's garden, the seven little boys, they're all, like some are in the Marines, they're all very, very well placed in society right now. They made the first drum themselves, like they got the animal, they skinned it, they stretched it, they cleaned the hide, they soaked it, they made the wooden frame. It was absolutely a, a life-changing experience. And when they made their sticks, the elder in Burt Woods, because I had just leather, and he said, no, 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 soften up. I have sheep. I'm going to give you some sheep for her skin. I said, really? Anyway, he, he, he gave me the uh, coverings, and that's what we started with. That one floor drum, that was 1993, perhaps, around that. Mm -hmm. And I had the boys involved. So I said, there's no English. And they said, what? Oh, no, no, there's no English. Oh, we're going to listen to them other people. Uh, no, you're not. You're going to sing the songs of your people, the Mi'kmaq. I said, what you hear on, it was tape recorders at that time, is like Ojibwe, Cree, and they have the right to their own music, but so do you. So what I did, I went to Eskasoni the very summer, mm -hmm. and I was taught by three knowledgeable elders, and I lived there for two weeks in the household, and I wasn't allowed to speak English. And Wilford Prosper was one of them. And he would start 7 o'clock in the morning, as soon as I had my breakfast. Okay, okay, now, this is what we have to do. We have to do how great thou art today. I said, oh, I love that. But he was saying all this in Megama. And I was saying, Ojiniskum, Ojiniskum, what's Ojiniskum? And he said, think, think. But it was so beautiful. And at the end of the day, that's that hymn was transcribed and then of course we did the amazing grace and then, then so on and so on with the sacred music so i walked away that summer with seven beautiful brand new sacred pieces so i established a church choir of children like from the ages i think they were uh, probably nine to 16 years old and they sang in the church then they sang at a funeral so I went back the following summer, and I wanted more sacred music. So I learned how to sing the Glorious Mysteries in Mi'kmaq. And I learned how to sing Ave Maria and all these classical pieces. Because this Wilford Prosper, he was so gifted. He was a very knowledgeable elder. So I brought it back, and we did that. And then the boys were there saying, how about the drum songs, huh? I said, yes, we know the honor, because I taught them the honor song, then I taught them the gathering song, and then we did the friendship song, and then we did the uh, uh, the, the circle of friendship. And they were saying, are we going to learn any more, teacher? And I said, well, the only way I can do that is if I get somebody to come in and instruct drum songs, because it's not so easy. It's not like any other piece of music. You can't pick up a sheet and go, okay, I'll preview this. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. It's all oral tradition. So we had a uh, Michel Doucette come in from Eskasoni. He's a spiritual leader there, and he taught the boys, and he brushed up some of the Mi'kmaq that I had done. He, a remarkable job, and he still comes. To this day, he was here last year, and he'll come over and he'll sit at the drum. And since then, I'm after having so many drum groups. Right now, we have 31 drummers in different factions of the school. What? Yes, because the primary students, as they're going through, they hear the 
junior high and the high, and they're like, wow, I'm going to be a drummer. Hey, Miss Brenda, you're going to put me on the drum. Hey, Miss Brenda. And we do. Like, I have a unit of traditional drumming in every course I teach from grade two to grade nine. So by the time they're in grade nine, they're polished. So I can put them in like different, like if we went to Japan and Ottawa and Halifax and we did like the major gatherings for Mi'kmaq people, like the member 2400. And we've done, we've sang for other Mi'kmaq people. And that's very difficult mm -hmm. because if you're singing for polished language resource people, you have to be like exact. So we were at um, Antigonish and I was at El Nui Sultanage which is a language conference for Mi'kmaq speakers. And the choir was invited to open it up as the key, uh, after the keynote. And so we did, and we did, uh, I did something strange. I took the Amazing Grace, Ule Udi, and I crossed it with Pachelbel's Canon. So then I did the harmonies and stuff. So they sang all in Mi'kmaq, and on the Pachelbel's Canon section, they danced. And it was absolutely touching. And the, there's a sister, Dorothy Moore, up there, a renowned educator and linguist as well. And she came up and she had tears in her eyes. And the children just, they were so ecstatic. They said, we must be good. I said, you're more than good. You're fantastic. You're wonderful. Because I said, you're not just singing. You're passing on a culture. You're keeping it alive. You're re rejuvenating it. Wow. And they stayed to the grade 12, I had every single one still. Nobody left the choir, see, unless, until the grade 12 thing come. And then I had like really, uh, I had one little girl, I had her for 12 years, and it was, she was in grade 12, and she said, what will I do next year? I said, what, do you really love the music that you're doing now? Yes. I said, apply to music school. Oh, I have to audition for that, and I have to do, I said, yes, and we're gonna get you ready for that. And anyway, she went in, she did the opera program. And then we sent kids out in Western Canada doing the Broadway programs. And then we had one audition in New York. So although it's done in Mi'kmaq, the standard is still there. I make sure the standard has mm -hmm. to be equitable, right? Same as any other type of music. Beautiful interpretation, intonation, I do all of that. But it's from them and it's theirs. And the, the, when we go on the road, we take both the drummers and the chanters. The chanters that we use now, like this year, would be the people who dedicated their time to do koanas. They have to do a minimum of five pieces in order to be in the chanters group. So we had some new hand drums arrive, and they're performing for APTN. I think it's later today. So they've, they've, they're just so happy. And, but I tell you, this wouldn't work everywhere. It's the parents no matter what you, what layer you peel away, it's the parents of those children or the, their guardians who did that. Not me, it's those parents. They bought the ribbon shirts and they bought the ribbon dresses and they bought the, the jewelry or had it made. There's an elder here in Mardina Marshall. Mm -hmm. And if a child went up to get moccasins and they'll say, oh, look at the bottoms of these moccasins. There's holes in them. What have you done? What's Miss Brenda done? And they say, it's good, hey, because she said that we traveled many miles, so that's how much we shared with other people. And she would always make, like if we were going to something, say, sacred, like a, a sacred gathering, she would ensure that every one of those little ones had exactly what they needed and understood, like if they wore a medicine pouch, if she sold them a medicine pouch or she gave it to them and she gifted it, she would explain, now, this is what you're holding, and this is what you do when you hold this. So it's a whole community resource. It's totally different than the music I did on the South Coast, which was all composition-based, and the adjudicators understood it. Mm -hmm. But that, too, was a downfall, because we, we do the koanas in central Newfoundland, and we've been carrying the drum, I'd say, for, what, 15 years. And every time we get adjudicated, I can't adjudicate that, and it kills them. It kills the boys. Uh, if I had to put a mark, and I don't know where to mark it because I don't have a score. So I would say to the, him and to the committee, you have to develop empathy. If you're serving this coast, you have to be cognizant of exactly who's coming to this festival. Mm 
But no, we didn't make headway yet. So the drum hasn't gone now for the past five years. And the chanters, well, I put them in the, like we could say 18 years and under choirs. So they will be singing the glory or like God made my these hands or some beautiful piece. And then mine will go in and say they they might sing the Ave Maria in Migama. They'll always come over and say, my God, that was stunning. I couldn't write anything on the paper. The pitch, the interpretation, and I didn't understand a word you said, but I can't mark it because I don't understand it. I'm like, wow, how many people, how many adjudicators know every language, like 12 languages that a pope or somebody would know? No, it's, it's, so that's what we have to do as educators, is not only educate our children, we're doing that. But we've got to get them to develop the empathy and the ability to share all of this. Because if not, some children, when they hear comments like that, they withdraw. And, they, and, and, it, and it has happened. But I've managed to bring them back. But it hurts. It really hurts. Because on the way back in the bus, they'll say, I wonder what mark we would have got, Miss Brenda. And I said, well, in my heart, you got the highest mark. Oh, next year we should do an English song then and a Mi'kmaq song. So that's what I've been doing. I'll do one English and one Mi'kmaq, but not happy with that at all. No, not happy. It's shocking. Mm, it's, it's very sad, especially since we're associated with the festival for yes. 35 years. We've been sending kids back and forth because I've been teaching for 39. Five was in Marystown, so four is there, 34 wow. years. It's, wow. it, it just hurts. It really, really hurts. Yeah. Mm, yeah. But we do the best we can. Basically, that's it. I have the teach the dancing and the traditional drumming, the hand drumming, the chanting group, the sacred choirs, the traditional. Well, I, I also have choirs like class choirs, and they also sing an Aboriginal piece and an English piece. But it's very, very difficult, like to find the Aboriginal pieces for say grade two, three, four, five, and six. Mm -hmm. Where are they? Because mm -hmm. there's only so many Mi'kmaq songs out there. Mm -hmm. So I, what I've been doing lately is taking the, thematic songs intended for teaching people about First Nations people like Pocahontas's uh, Colors of the Wind. That's absolutely, the, the lyrics in that are stunning. So we've done that one, one year and like they were so happy that it was done. But the problem is, is that there's not enough resources. Because mm -hmm. I need to be retaught in order to teach more. Mm -hmm. I need, I, I'm hungry, but I haven't been sent anywhere to, to, to learn more in, in many, many years. Mm -hmm. So that that's that's the drawback for me. Mm -hmm. I would love to learn more. I would love to pass on more, mm -hmm. but that's it. Mm -hmm. Indigenous education is the ability to install in every little child the ability to understand where you came from, what the treaties are, what TRC means, and out of TRC comes the residential schools. Every Aboriginal child doesn't even understand the truth yet. Truth Reconciliation Commission, where's the truth? What's the truth, teacher? And I always would put the, in the older, old school, we, we just moved here, I would have the treaties around my music room. Mm. And, and, you know, you would direct when you're teaching a certain piece, still say, wow, I didn't know we had those land rights. Yes, so just watch. Look, in 1752, this was written. And this is what this means. And look, it, it's signed. It's signed by your people and the federal government. So you have the right to do this. I think that's the first thing in Indigenous education. They have to figure out what the truth is before they can take the next step and say, now, where do we go from the truth? We, have, we can't shroud it in negativity. We, like the residential schools, nobody understands unless they were actually at these schools. And that's what's so powerful. And the, the, I think music and uh, performing arts could bring a lot of that out, right? Mm -hmm. Put a nice a turn to it. Uh, just like uh, Gore Downey did. There needs to be like a thousand Gore Downies in music, as music teachers. And then they bring that to the children and say, okay, Let's, let's compose. Let's do a composition. Let's do a composition about the little girl who waited and waited for Christmas to come. And then when Christmas came, she was told the day before, no, you're not going home. You're staying here at this school. And she was devastated. And then there's so many other stories, right? And you could turn that into song because song is prayer and prayer is light. So you're giving light to people who need to know the truth. And then they can start reconciling. They'll understand each other. 
but without knowing your history, what actually happened, and the history and knowledge of other Aboriginal groups. And that's why this NCC, i.e. works, because it's a network that connects, not just for teachers, oh no, for elders mm -hmm. who think it's all lost. They just got to key in and say, oh look, they're doing that out in Manitoba. Wow, look what's happening in PEI. Oh my God, our history is not forgotten. But it's only through these types of organizations that, ha that that happens. Because right now we're seeing TRC, TRC, which is wonderful, but we have to bring it back. Mm -hmm. And we have to do truth first to our children because we weren't part of the residential school. But we should be empathetic towards those that were. And to, because I am a music, musically inclined, I think music is the key to that. I think it will open the soul mm -hmm. of all those dear people who suffered mm -hmm. immensely. And there are people and the elders, because I've gone to conferences for um, education, Aboriginal, it's ANTEC, Atlantic yes. Native Teachers Education mm -hmm. Council Conference, and I've sat there and I've been thinking, oh my God, the resources in this room. Like even when a person says, uh, we don't teach at the moccasins, eh, in ours, I And I'm like, I bet she could say that in Mi'kmaq. So after I went home, I said, could you say what you spoke up in the conference? Can you say that in Mi'kmaq? Oh, yeah, hey, yeah. And then she went, I said, you know something? You should say more in Mi'kmaq. That would make more people stop and listen. And then probably in five years, whoever's the prime minister, there might be more Aboriginal content in what you call the caucus and the cabinet so that the very few that are there, especially if they're female, are understood because they want things done right. And that's what's happening now. We're seeing a shift. It's like there are, there's almost a new divide starting. So they're taking what's happening in cabinet and saying, that's women, that's Aboriginal. And it comes out, if they don't understand the truth, that's what happens to, to Aboriginal history, knowledge, so music will cure all that. If I live to be a hundred. Yep. Everything is grounded in positivity because you start with yeah. the chief, yeah. traditional chief and administrative chief, Michel Joe. Yes. Whatever he does, whoever comes in front of him, he will never ever divide and say, a professional person d deserves more dignity than say a ditch digger. No, mm -hmm. everybody is equal here. No matter what, this is how he operates his community. The power he has and the knowledge he has. Mm -hmm. So they're really, really, and, and we're so lucky that he's still the chief after so many years. But he's there every second Monday to welcome his community. Whatever's on their mind, whatever stream of life they're from, they sit in the council chambers and they listen to their people. And that's what's missing in the outside world, though. Absolutely. But we could do it, we could do it. Municipalities can do it in little sections. My vision for this school would be, it would be at least 60% full-time Mi'kmaq speaking children, teachers, educators, resource people. There would be more uh, acknowledgement of the treaties around, the, uh, teaching the treaties, teaching the residential school. Everybody in 10 years time should should have developed that empathy that's needed and they should know about their history and their culture, their genealogy even. Mm -hmm. Like because we've been here for a time immemorial and a lot of students, when you step off the reserve and you go back and say, oh, I came from Ireland and my because my grandmother came from Ireland, but my, my grandfather came from Scotland. So here, it's all, we came from Con River, we came from the Joe plant, the Chador plant, and stuff like that. So it's wonderful. Like you said, the humming is because they know who they are. They know what road, they know what they have to do to succeed because they, like there's a doctor, and now he's just studying to be a neurologist from Con River. They have lawyers here, they have nursing practitioners, nurses, and we have so many that we don't have enough jobs. Like our uh, recent graduate now, Adriana, she has to go to Nova Scotia because our clinic is filled with our own people that are doing the nursing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're on a real, like the humming, thank you. We're on that path of, we gotta continue this humming, mm -hmm. but we have to make sure we proceed at number one, the language. To me, it's the heart and soul of the, Everything. The language was born on, uh, this is my belief, on the country. Why the country? Because in days gone by, long before our time, that's where the language originated. Did you bring enough to pull away? Butter. Oh, 
bees away, salt, pepper. And that's where it started. And they would go hunting and they would share stories and they'd be gone probably weeks on end. Then they would bring back their hunt and then the language was there and it was so rich. So we need to re, we, we need to reassociate some of these kids with the land portion, the trapping, the hunting. It's, it's still taking place, but not as a business, but as a way of life, as a culture. So that, I think that's important. Uh, Ten years time, I'm hoping to be here. I'll be the oldest teacher probably in Canada, seriously. And I'm hoping that the admin team here, which are phenomenal, that's another thing, see? If you have a school and your admin team really believes in you and gives you so many experiences with the outside world as well as within, you will succeed. And that's what's happening here. Mm -hmm. Everybody's voice is heard. There's no way anybody could say, I didn't know so-and-so was doing that to a unit in grade two. And we would say, oh, yeah, they always do the elder story. They always interview the elders or whatever portion they're doing. Everybody knows what everybody else is doing. It's just like a perfect braid. Everybody works together. And like this morning, uh, the girls are coming in because they have to do something with APTN. And a teacher came down. She said, wow, it's so spiritually uplifting when they come in with their beautiful jewelry and their hair braided and carrying their garment bags. And she said, brought my drum. I said, you didn't. She said, yes. I said, now to me, that's so powerful, Kayla, because you were one of those when you were in pre-kindergarten and I took you right through. You went down the States and you studied music down in the States. Now you're back here teaching. She said, got up. I had to take the drum. I knew those kids today would be performing. So th this is what happens. Mm -hmm. It never leaves them. Once you ignite that spark within them, it gives them such confidence. Mm -hmm. And in 10 years time, we've got to have a bigger mu music program. Really. Yeah. Mm, it's the only thing that will work. Yeah. That's my visual arts. Visual arts is so important. Mm -hmm. But now I'm being biased because I teach music. <laughs> but I've seen such successes. I really have. And you can go and you can do basketball, volleyball, in any school, anywhere. Mm -hmm. But can you come to any school and find out who you are, where you came from, in your own language? and what you can pass on, because the Aboriginal people and this collaboration mm -hmm. is absolutely needed, and it needs to go on for at least 10 years, because mm -hmm. this is all some people have as resources, mm -hmm. and we look at those videos and we take, wow, didn't know they were doing that there. I'm going to Indespire in November. I'm going to connect with that person, because that's what I've done, mm -hmm. because it's so powerful a network, and we have to have that to make sure everybody has a voice. Because way up north where Kayla taught last year, mm -hmm. it was so remote. But what she brought back, the stories. Mm -hmm. And what does this offer? Mm -hmm. A chance for her experiences. Mm -hmm. And it will open doors to teachers who go up north, which is absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. But one big regret I got, I have to add it, is that our province is Newfoundland and Labrador. So Labrador, I would love, love, to go and learn the Inu, the Tuk, the Inu, and do the musical program there. If I could have a second life, I would go to Labrador. I went to a conference, oh geez, a few years back now. Anyway, it was an Aboriginal uh, conference and every student from every part of Labrador descends on Goose Bay. And they have this Aboriginal Arts Festival. And I was so lucky to be chosen to go there. And I, I, was, I was just beyond, I was so happy. I was like, oh God, this is gonna be all so, the stories I could tell. So anyway, I sat down and Mud Lake came on first. Mm -hmm. And there were seven of them. And I was like, seven children, wow. And they sang this song. And it was the most beautiful song in the whole world. And I, every time I think of them or see anything on the news about Labrador, I'll always think of Mud Lake, and then you have Paradise River, and then you have Shashi. How much music is in Shashi? Look at them, what the, the Moravians, the missionaries did. Mm -hmm. Who's doing that now? Mm -hmm. And sadly, last year, that, that, that was closed off. Isn't that sad? Mm -hmm. That's why this organization mm -hmm. can actually, if they can bond in with you guys, they will say, hey, we could do this. We've got a lot of support there. So that, that's a, an ultimate dream of mine is to go to Labrador in my next life. City, I sat on the uh, Aboriginal, uh, the design of the new Aboriginal Social Studies curriculum. 
And the, the representatives from Labrador would be up on one end of the table and I was in, say, towards the middle. And we couldn't make that. They would be so shy and they would be so humble. So we need to understand their yes. truths. Yes. Unlock yes. their truths. Yes. Show them, wow, you are a fantastic human being. Now, let's bring it out. Let's bring it back to the community. And we could do that through music. Yes, all of the, the network is absolutely amazing as it is. And it's going to grow because of people like you. And it's going to get the right messages to the right people. And that's so important. But the major of your acronym, the major word is collaboration. Mm -hmm. You took the time to come here. Mm. You will develop so many friendships after this. And so you'll get stronger. Mm -hmm. And now our community and our resource people and our beautiful elders will be understood. We'll have a voice. We'll have a voice now. We'll know, uh, like, uh, Verley, mm -hmm. I have uh, this idea to do this in my classroom. I don't mind doing that with you now. I would email you and say, I'm thinking about, what do you think of that? Mm -hmm. Because you came and you humbled yourself and everybody here loves you. They love you <laughs> and they know why you're here. That's what's so important. So the students came in this morning, like one little child was out due to sickness. And she said, Miss Brenda, please say I didn't miss my interview. I said, no, my love, I will give up my chair for you. Oh, thank you, Miss Brenda, she said, because I really need to speak. And I said, awesome. Because the people here, like I said earlier, like you have the top professionals. Uh, we have uh, Indispire Youth Award winner here. Like, you know. We've, we've done our thing, but in 10 years or so, the question was so rich because you're not giving up and you're not saying, good job, that's good. No, where are you going to be in 10 years? We're going to be at least 50 times ahead of our language and incorporating the music and the art and putting it all together and sharing it with others. Mm -hmm. That's what I see. So what we've done now lately uh, is that uh, Mia Bouguet Comriver has been uh, successful in getting a living encyclopedia. One was done for Fogo, one was done for Patrouille, but uh, Comriver has theirs now. Wow. So I was on the okay. editorial team and working with these amazing people, uh, Jerry Evans and Pam Hall. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So okay. they, that's exactly what they did. They went to the students. They. They, they okay. train the students how to interview, how to video, how to audio record, and then they sent them out in totally different genres within mm -hmm. the community. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. some people might have done all kind of cooking, mm -hmm. the moose nose, mm -hmm. how is it done? And then so that's a pictorial history, right, mm -hmm. of a community, because mm -hmm. we they, they covered everything. It is absolutely amazing. So it will soon be published. Okay. But anyway, that's exactly what those kids were done. They were, they, they yes. were trained to do this. But the only thing was that they were at the grade 12 level. So after the project, they were gone to post-secondary. Oh, so to me, yes. I think we should Much lower it because if you five, want it passed on and mm -hmm. just like the drum, oh my, will we be doing that when we get in grade two? I'm going to be a drummer. Mm -hmm. They could look forward to saying, mm -hmm. I'm hoping to be on that editorial team or on that recording mm -hmm. team because my nan told me a story and I want everybody to know that story. And I want to ask people yeah. questions. Look what you're doing. Look at the self-esteem you're giving them. And that's mm -hmm. like those little ones that did that. And it, the, the product is going to be world class yes. because they yes. left no stone unturned. But it's visual. So what you're su suggesting is that we have to make the histories how shall we say, um, literal. Mm -hmm. They have to learn other ways too. That was the picture. Mm -hmm. But I, it is very important that the histories are taught exactly what happened. So you got to have the right resource people, mm -hmm. like these two people that came in here. Mm -hmm. They met with us, the chief and council, mm -hmm. and then they picked their editorial team, and then we collaborate, just like you're doing, mm -hmm. collaborate and say, now what is important or what do we want the outside communities to learn about me mm -hmm. and my dear I'd say they had 200 suggestions on their their chat papers and her office was like oh my god it was just like the presidential suite just before election day everybody was up and saying oh we well, have to do this and then they had to narrow them down so I stood back and said Aren't we glad we have too much? Because a lot of people say, oh, those uh, Aboriginal people, sure, that's all they do is just uh, dance and sing. 
But that, 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 that knowledge there, which will be passed on pictorially, so we're hoping that your group mm -hmm. and other groups like you will get the literal histories out there, so the stories. So when you say literal, what do you mean? Like, like stories saying, and the yes. histories be written yeah, okay. and orally transmitted in yes. some circle, you know, yes. if, yes. if the elder can't read or write yes. or whatever, yes. Yes. right? Yes. But we got to get them before they, they're gone. Yeah. Every yeah. day we lose an elder, yeah. we lose such knowledge base. Mm -hmm. I know. So, but we have to do something very soon mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. Because I've, to me, after all these years, you're the first one to say, We've got to get those stories and those histories down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because once they're gone, those elders are gone, oh, gone. the culture is, is, is died. The stories are died.